Hello everyone, welcome back. So last week we spent a lot of time talking about base flow and base flow separation methods. So these are the three methods that we learned um, in, in our base flow videos. So the first one is straight line method, fixed base method and variable slope method. What we are going to do today is we are going to do an assignment. So we will actually see how these methods will be applied. So this is our assignment 11. Uh, there is a link to this on the course website and also um, on Blackboard for Purdue students. So what I have given you here is a hypothetical hydrograph and we are going to use the three methods that we learned last week to separate base flow. Um, so let's get started. Um, so the first method that we are going to do is the straight line method. So the straight line method says that we need to identify when the direct runoff starts and when it ends. So I'm going to call this as A. A is when the direct runoff starts and B is when it stops. So the straight line method says that you just join points A and B with a straight line. So you do that. Then what I'm asking you is to find out the base flow at different time steps. So what we are going to do is we are going to find the base flow at this times. And in this table here, I'm just asking you to report the base flow and the direct runoff at time equal to 3 hours, 5 hours, 7, 9 and 11. But I'll show you how to do it and I'll only give you few numbers and then the rest you can do on your own. So we know that the value at A is 140 which is at time equal to 3. So this is going to be 140 and the hydrograph also has 140. So there is no direct runoff at this point. Um, and as I said, this is when the direct runoff starts. So the direct runoff hydrograph value is zero. Okay, and the base flow is 40. So let's see how we can get the values at five, seven, nine, and 11. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the slope of line AB. So that slope will be 140 minus 105. That's the value of base flow at A and B. And then we have eight. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight time intervals. And if you do that, what you get is 4.375 CFS per hour. Okay. So to get the value at five, time equal to five hours, what you have to do is B at five is 140 minus two times that slope. So two times. So I'm using two because 140 is the value at T equal to three hours and we are interested in T equal to five hours. So two times the slope at AB or slope of AB. So 4.375. And if you do that, what you get is, I'm going to do this on my calculator here. One thirty one point twenty five. So this will be one thirty one point twenty five. And the direct runoff will then be, so this value will be at t equal to five, the total flow is 350. So 350 minus 131.25 will be the direct runoff value at t equal to five hours. And that comes to 1.1. That's 218.75. So 
CFS. So similarly for base flow at 7, you will do 140 minus 4 times the slope. Uh, for B, base flow at T equal to 9 hours, you will do, I'll do B9 just for, so B9 will be 140, huh. One forty minus so six times that slope three seven five and let me see what do I get and I get 113.75. So the direct runoff at t equal to nine hour then will be, so at t equal to nine hour it's 250. So 250 is the total flow minus 113.75. So that will be 113.75. At t equal to 11, so our base flow is 105 and the direct runoff is 0. So I, I have given you almost all values so you can do the calculation for t equal to 7 hours on your own. So this is how you can do base flow separation using straight line method. So this is our base flow here, everything under that line. I'm drawing that in yellow and then again not necessary but i'm finding this very fun and nice so this is how you can see we separated the base flow using straight line method so this is the straight line method in the next video we will look at how to do base flow separation using fixed base method